continue with the flow. Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, shall we start now? Or do we want to wait until nine? Exactly nine. Yeah, it's still there's still four minutes. According to my clock. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll just wait another four minutes. My background is <laughs> Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum and good morning, everyone. Welcome to another series, webinar series uh, conducted by UTLC. And this time um, we're having webinar on higher education alert, aligned education for redesign transformation. And with us today, we have three uh, speakers who I'm sure most of us know already. We are familiar with them. Um, but let me just introduce them anyway. Um, okay, we have, first of all, Prof. Fauzia Abdurrahim, who's a professor at the School of Education, University of Uttar Malaysia. And um, uh, she has served at the university for a very long time. And her bio note says um, she developed her enthusiastic love for teaching, researching, and community services, while she still struggles to write about what she loves. I think that's sweet. Uh, I think I always find her very inspiring. Um, she headed the, this research on higher ed alert uh, amidst her deanship and throughout the pandemic. Thanks to her committed research members and research assistants, this project was done within the short period of time and it has expanded, according to her, her horizon of challenges in higher education. Welcome, uh, Prof. Fauzia. All right, next with us is Dr. Nuliana Bukhari, uh, the team member of Higher Education Alert. Dr. Nuliana is also a faculty member of uh, School of Education, UUM. She received her PhD in Educational Research, Measurement and Evaluation from the University of North Carolina. Her research focuses on, it's a long list actually, uh, issues on fairness in testing, technology integration of assessment, understanding learners, assessment design, validation, and psychometric estimation. That's a whole lot of expertise there. She's in, she, has, she was involved in a semester-long professional engagement at the internationally renowned testing company, CTB McGraw-Hill Education in Monterey, uh, USA. She was one of the facilitators for the Noble Training uh, organized by Higher Education Department. Uh, specializing in uh, cognitive skills. When the first MCO started in March 2020, she was appointed to join a task force organized by the university, uh, HEA, AD, AEDU, to prepare guidelines on the implementations of various modes of assessment, especially during the pandemic. Welcome, Dr. Nuliana. And last but not least, Dr. Nosiha Alias. Uh, who is a senior lecturer at Islamic Business School. She obtained her PhD from Warwick Business School, uh, United Kingdom. Her area of specialization is strategic marketing. And she has experience teaching marketing courses at the university for more than uh, 20 years. She's very passionate about designing learning activities that help learners to apply knowledge to the real world uh, setting. In the past five years, she has designed her undergraduate classes, class activities involving community engagement. So she's one of those who are very expert in uh, community engagement. She has shared her teaching and learning design in a few learning training sessions with UM Academic Style. Welcome Dr. Nasiha, welcome everybody. Uh, so this is um, actually a sharing of um, your research project 
yeah, your findings, which is very relevant to the current situation in which we are moving, though in a very uncertain period, but we should certainly are moving towards a more complicated nature of teaching and learning, which may include hybrid learning as well. Without uh, further delay, I would like to invite Prof. Faustia to give us an overview of uh, this session and the project. Prof? Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, uh, Associate Professor Dr. Sarima, um, for moderating this session and for giving us our biodata. It feels, it cringes me to hear um, um, when people read the biodata, but nevertheless, that's part of the protocol. Okay, uh, yes, uh, before we continue, um, I would like to ask permission for me to share the um, a little bit of... Um, um, how shall I say? Um, slides. Yeah, the, sorry. Okay. <coughs> yeah. Um, thank you, everybody who's here. And also, I understand that there's some um, who might be joining us in the FB, um, UTLC FB. Um, this is, as uh, Associate Professor Dr. Sarema said, um, it is part of our uh, research, uh, which is entitled Higher Education Alert, Align Education for Redesign Transformation. And this was uh, basically um, a research that was um, funded by the Ministry of Higher Education. And so this morning, um, organized by University Teaching Learning Center, together with me, uh, Dr. Norliana uh, from the School of Education, Dr. Norsiha from Islamic Business School, who are members of this research, um, will be sharing um, what we have found and also share some suggestions about what we should be um, doing um, in facing um, the VUCA world that we are definitely in. Um, just to give you an overview, um, as I mentioned just now, um, this it was part of the of the um, COVID, uh, sorry, post COVID nine, what was it? Post COVID nineteen research grant uh, that we only have to have only three um, uh, members, and um, um, to but to help us uh, to complete this this project. Uh, we had um, our research, two research assistants, um, Dr. Uh, Dr. Abdul Rahim, who was at that point of time was also stuck in the country because he couldn't go back um, to his uh, native land, and uh, Dr. Uh, sorry, inshallah, uh, and Cheikh Nur Hafisa, Hafisha, sorry. We did we um, we completed this particular project in six months time. And on the 23rd of February, we presented to the Ministry of Higher Education panel um, 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 and to their delight, they were very happy with our, our progress and our findings, Alhamdulillah. But we still owe them um, uh, publish, publication, which is still, I've got to stop uh, doing the administrative and hopefully this year uh, things will materialize. Please pray for us. Um, as I mentioned, it's a six months project from the 1st of August 2020 to the 31st January 2021. Um, it's not a, well, if you consider as it's a big or small a project is, is based on the amount of the grant. This is just a measly 20,000 um, research grant, but we were very uh, um, happy to have received this um, grant because it's, it's basically as academics, we were also interested about what we can do uh, what, to understand what's going on. And at the same time, ho hoping from the research, we can actually help um, the country to move forward. So the first research objective was to gather baseline data on changes made by the institutions in terms of COVID-19 effects of learning and teaching in view of the existing policies. So we knew that um, before the pandemic, uh, we had our various policies and, and blueprints that we refer to. But because of the COVID-19, we had to do some amendments and we want to see Excuse how... Me, sorry, Prof. Yeah. I'm yes. sorry. If, uh, I'm currently looking at 
several slides. They are small, and I'm not sure whether you are looking at the same thing. There's something wrong with this computer, I think. I, this is not my second. Okay. Hmm. Okay, now 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 it's showing. Yeah, so previously we can we could see, but uh, the content wasn't that clear. Maybe you like to go back a little bit. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. um, thank you, Dr. Noliana, for letting me know. Um, okay. Uh, and I need to book out my chat in order for me to know what have, what people are sending. Okay, I'm so sorry about that, everybody. Um, for that um, technical glitch. Okay, so these are the, the group members, as I mentioned just now, and the research assistant that was helping us um, with the project. Without them, I don't think we would be able to finish within six months because the project was just um, a six month project. So on the 23rd of February uh, last year, um, we presented uh, to, the, uh, to the sponsors, to the Minister of Higher Education, and um, yeah, that was it. So basically a little bit, um, as I'm to reiterate what I said just now, um, this project has got two research objectives. The first is to gather baseline data on the changes uh, made uh, by institutions in terms of the COVID-19 effects of learning and teaching in view of the existing policies. Um, we want to know how did, what did they do uh, to face the, the, the at that time, um, um, COVID-19 uh, pandemic hitting every institutions of higher learning and the next one is to propose a framework for policy improvement re redesigning transformation in malaysian higher education in times of crisis and forward right so um so that's that's my overview of this particular project so what um what will happen in this morning um, is we're going to divide the session into three parts and one, um, one will be for the final Q&A. So the first session will be um, sharing of research. This will be presented by Dr. Norliana um, about our research, uh, basically what we did for our, um, in terms of the research and um, followed by the implication to various parties and uh, suggestions to practitioners. Uh, practitioners. This will be uh, presented by Dr. Noor Seha. And then um, um, I hope the moderator will allow me to have a little bit of uh, reflective activities and, and, and then we can start the discussion. If that's okay with you, uh, Dr. Sari, will that be all right, Dr. Sari? Yeah, I'm sure she's able. Yes, to. yes, sure. Uh, okay. Prof, yes. All right. So um, I th I'm going to stop sharing. Um, because um, the next is actually from Dr. Noliana, uh, Dr. Sari. She will be presenting the, the, the research. This All right. Okay. <laughs> Am I still here? I no, um, I think I get because it says Zoom crashes on me. Oh. Okay, I'm still here. Okay. <laughs> I'm still here. Are you sharing your screen? Oops. Dr. Nuliana? Yeah. <laughs> I, I got locked out. I mean, it's a right. Zoom quit unexpectedly. Okay, right, now I'm back. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay. Clear, clear, clear. Yeah. I'm glad. Uh, let me share my screen again. Are you willing? To, uh, uh, I'm sorry. Are you able to see this uh, slide? Yes. It says yes. research background and... You know, yes, we can. Okay, it's in full slide, I hope. Yes. Okay. So basically, um, like Prof. I just said, <laughs> by the way, greetings. Hello, everyone. Salam alaikum. Um, I'm also uh, one of the members. And uh, for us to 
venture into this research, I think it was kind of, uh, I was very nervous because it's a six month project and anything that happened, it was COVID and we are still adapting and stuff. Um, but we understand that it has to be addressed. This is a very um, daunting issues and demanding issues and uh, with the outbreak of the unprecedented outbreak of COVID. I think it's, uh, it affects all, uh, all of us. I mean, every aspect, every system, every field, uh, especially the governments, the governance of higher education. And here we are, uh, at first we are still working on the teaching and learning. <laughs> We're not at that time, research, community engagement. I think everything was put on hold. Um, so COVID, COVID is really, something that affects us until now we are still battling with this and I think yeah at least to be said it disrupted a lot of sectors especially as the higher education so with this um so we took the oh, okay <laughs> did it go okay there you go. I think it's in my internet or what it's I'm having this lag okay so the, the idea is actually we want to see what transformations being made. And it's just, uh, you know, um, I think, what do you say, uh, relevant to choose those who actually making the decisions, you know, what's going on at the universities and stuff. Here, uh, the participants, when we decided to, um, to choose a participant, we think, okay, who's going to make the decisions regarding teaching and learning at the universities? Who are the leaders? So here we choose among the 17 leaders from nine public universities and the universities all over Malaysia. We have uh, from the north, uh, northern region, the central region. We have from the south and also in one in the east, okay, and which is in um, Sabah or Sarawak. <laughs> we cannot, we, we try not to. <laughs> give away that detail that much, okay, because it's supposed to be confidential. Um, then this, uh, among the 17 leaders, uh, they were um, Deputy Vice Chancellor uh, for Academic and International Affairs, and then um, some universities have, we, we chose two leaders, some universities we, we managed to get three leaders involving in the teaching and learning. Uh, like I said earlier, Deputy Vice Chancellor in for Academic and International Affairs, and then we have um, Director for Teaching and Learning Center. <laughs> um, of course, at UUM, we also we we only we have DTLC University Teaching and Learning Center, and of course, different uh, university have different names. Um, I, I cannot say that too because it will <laughs> gives off the <laughs> the universities, the participants. Uh, yeah, and one uh, some universities we managed to get three. Sometimes they have UTLC and something like that, and then also a curriculum center. So we got some, we got three leaders related, uh, and, you know, and taking the responsibilities to, uh, to overlook the teaching and learning things, and we got the curriculum part. So 17 leaders from nine public universities. So having these leaders, we definitely conduct an uh, interview, definitely. As I, we, <laughs> I went straight to the third bullet. But um, before we approach uh, those leaders, we conducted the stop review because there's no way we can just go through and ask, go exploratory, because this is qualitative, uh, definitely a qualitative study. And we conducted the stop review to get some preliminary ideas, what's going on, what's really going on. And we attended webinars, we, we look at briefs, we look at policy briefings and um, of, uh, overseas. Uh, here we have International Association of Universities uh, policy briefing that look at what's going on. Still, they are having the second report, I think, in, uh, on 1st March. Feel free to go download their, um, the report. Um, and then there's one guy who's from University of uh, Dusto in Spain, start talking about the overall idea of the global thing, what's, how we can uh, go forward, what are the issues and stuff. Uh, in Malaysia, so we, we, we had uh, one policy, we, we're still having that, but at the time I think Dasar E Pembelajaran Negara, the PAN uh, 2.0, I was told that we are moving to 4.0. 
and we look at different uh, guidelines. Like I said, I was, uh, like Dr. Sari was telling uh, that I was also in one of the task force at AEDU, um, working on this kind of uh, guidelines and what to do and what can be done, and how HEA can help uh, you know, provide uh, to, to support uh, during these uh, difficult times. Uh, here we have, we, we can see on the screen, uh, this is online final exam guidelines from UTM. We look at Malaysian education blueprint, definitely for higher education, the 2015 to 2025. So all these uh, documents and webinars and trainings for us to get some ideas. So that's we call desktop review. And from there, we conducted content analysis, like picking up okay, the important issues or how we can actually categorize them into, you know, so that we can break them into chunks and try to uh, elaborate further and finalize our interview protocol to do the video conference. And at the end, we conducted the thematic analysis using the Atlas DI. Um, yeah, that's what we did in six months. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, the framework development uh, is uh, for after we get the diff, uh, desktop review, we come up with kind of preliminary uh, ideas. So in, to, to build the, our framework for, for the higher high education alert. Um, like I said, we did content analysis from all the desktop reviews, all the briefings, all the webinars, all uh, the guidelines. And then um, we prepared the interview protocol, what to ask, what aspects to ask. We, at first, we ended up like with, I don't know, uh, maybe more than 10 pages of interview questions, and that's a lot. And, yeah, we got overwhelmed ourselves. Then we tried to reduce and go back and go back and forth and try and send it to pilot. Uh, not not those universities involved. We sent to pilot and we got inform, uh, feedback to improve our interview protocol. And then we collected the data. So nine universities trying to get in touch <laughs> with those uh, leaders. Uh, they are busy, they are having, you, you can see one of the findings, I also did got back to back meeting until midnight and stuff. So trying to get hold of them is one also, one of the challenges as well. But alhamdulillah, things, uh, things were done and they were very helpful. Okay, so what we found, uh, you know, from those interviews, from the leaders, uh, we got this, uh, you know, all 12, 12 dimensions, if you can see here, and um, this is like, um, we call it emphasis, uh, their, their emphasis on what's important and stuff. And the, yeah, A, B, C, these are all the pseudonyms of the universities. And uh, again, we have nine universities. So we can see here some really folk, like this blue one, <laughs> it seems like very, you know, proactive in terms of their leadership, their technology, uh, infrastructure, uh, even how they deal with MKM professional bodies seems like you know um, they're 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 going forward. They're no this the leaders know what to do, and of course uh, this is a very you know inspiring the yeah alternative assessment. They start talking about alternative assessment when we're still worrying about final exam with the paper and pencil in the hall. <laughs> uh, yeah, we can see and followed by the G universities, not so bad following through because, but the rest are pretty much the same. The emphasis is the same. Um, so we can see like leaders or uh, the, the one that I think the least emphasis at that time, like nothing changes a lot is actually the curriculum because we're still going <laughs> forward with what we have. Um, teaching practice, <laughs> Uh, also, like, not many is talking about that. Uh, so, infrastructure. I think a lot of people are. We are still in a in the mood in the mood like this is gonna end. <laughs> this is gonna end. So maybe so we'll just wait until you know the storm pass. But unfortunately, it hasn't. So this. Uh, okay. <laughs> This is a little bit of uh, elaboration of uh, what's uh, the findings in detail for each of the dimensions. Uh, first is the leadership. Here we want we 
to see the perspectives of the leaders and what they have decided, what decision that they made to address, to govern the issues for teaching and learning, just for the teaching and learning for now. And of course, assessment is part of teaching and learning, but we have to make it <laughs> highlighted, teaching, learning and assessment, um, because I think it's one of the issues that being being raised a lot and highly debated, okay, during the pandemic. So we hear like, we can see like about some of the families that we got, like from the uh, open coding is like from Atlas TI. I so like a lot of leaders mentioned like we were waiting, <laughs> not not a lot. I mean, there are a few because we only uh, nine universities. Like uh, there are a few universities leaders are waiting for directive from KBT. But what, uh, on the other hand, some are actually very proactive with the support and they got and they said the top management they need to give a lot of support they have to actually be proactive and sometimes we cannot just wait because KPT said um, we you know we, we give the, the the authority to to the university but some decided to wait and then yeah with the good team they said like of course the top management support we will um, you know we'll make it happen empowerment empowerment is the key you need to empower uh, your subordinates you know let them decide to let them give them the power to decide uh, <laughs> this is it. The, the chaos is there it was chaotic and then uh, there you go then the semester break and meeting <laughs> evening and night time you know um, this is when we, it's hard to get hold of them because they are so busy but they were kind enough to spend time for a you know, two to three hour interview. Okay. Uh, this is one I think is interesting, like when suddenly um, we really have to cancel our classes, like we decided to open the class and suddenly uh, the minister said, okay, time to let the students go back. So it's like it was a bomb announcement. <laughs> okay, the leader said, oh no. Okay, so that's not what we planned. Uh, yeah. Some people are being autocratic. So we have to understand the leader's point of view, why they are like that, because of the decisions that they have to make. That's what they said. Okay. And also during that, uh, with that leadership comes, how they gonna, you know, push others, not push, I mean, like support others and provide motivation and in terms of uh, the care that they give to the lecturers and students, you know, now we start talking about well-being, mental health, readiness. Are they ready? Are our lecturers ready? Are they interested? Because uh, some didn't want to go online for obvious reasons. The accessibility, you know, it's hard. Internet you know, at that time, now we are 5G, alhamdulillah. But internet was kind of like the excess. Okay, was, was bad. Okay, so here they come up with, ah, as a survey, a lot of survey at that time, uh, three quarter ready, <laughs> quarter still fear of technology. Um, yeah, and some those uh, universities who come up with the empowerment, the lead, one of the leaders mentioned that lecturers are becoming more confident. You know, they even previously they were so, you know, shy, shy away from, you know, video taping or turn on, turning on their videos and stuff. Now they start videotaping their lectures. So that's kind of like uh, one way to support. Um, yes, we know that what's going on still in our class, uh, we have you know, students with low SES, no place to, you know, to have a proper uh, learning uh, sessions. You know, the economy, <laughs> what happened there, some even help their parents you know, to find extra income. Okay, the social, the, yeah, the, what do you call it? um domestic violence issues and stuff okay so some even mentioned about you know we motivate them it's actually a blessing in disguise because previously lecturers were hesitant to to, to, to do this so you know the it's it's how the leaders motivate the uh, the lecturers and the students okay uh human resource in terms of training this is what we got. Uh, this is how they monitor and recruit if they need to recruit. But for this, I, um, most of them said that we never, we, uh, we stopped recruiting 
except one, one university mentioned that recruitment is still ongoing, we do it as usual. Um, but major, the majority of the universities said that, okay, we have to stop <laughs> recruiting because uh, right now we just focus on, you know, um, recovering. Okay, so training, they did uh, in the form of continuous professional, you see how it else is being, you know, showering us with all these uh, trainings and, yeah, I was blessed enough to yeah to join a lot of stuff, and we have the UTLC help desk. All the list of trainings you can see, like since two thousand twenty, and until now. So we have those, and same with other universities. Impact of training, you can see some people mentioned the impact. They managed to do the impact studies. You know, some are reskilling, some even upskilling. Um, yeah, uh, one hundred hours of training mention it we have trainer and sometimes uh we call it um uh, the leaders also attend okay because they according to them even the vice chancellor and the deputy vice chancellor once once in a while they need to attend the training because they, they although they do not have to teach but they need to know how it operates and what are the issues that the lead that their <laughs> faculty members you know face um Again, uh, here about online teaching, whether that's, that's one university that mentioned that they recruit normally, but still whether if the, the one that the candidate that they are trying to recruit is actually could do online teaching, they said that we did ask, but it's not one of the criteria yet for, for the recruitment. Uh, okay. So yeah, this one. Yes, we recruit additional staff during MCO, but no additional criteria. Just in case, like if you have any other uh, preference, you know, you need young ones or the savvy ones, the tech savvy ones. So they said no, no. We still continue with uh, that. We ask, but no additional criteria. That's uh. Then moving next to technology. This is the infrastructure, e-content development, web 2.0 tools. Um. Uh, <laughs> uh, the those one of directors one of the directors from teaching and learning center said that um, there's no integration between the content and the platforms the webex and the lms wasn't connected at that time now we can see like we can have webex you know in our uh, um portal something like that you know for example and same with other universities so like it's all like bits and pieces here and there it's hard to there's no integration so now they are working on it and they said they need to work on it Okay, uh, WhatsApp, because we use WhatsApp a lot to handle coverage problem. Now we use WhatsApp a lot, you know, for our formal meetings and stuff, uh, dissemination of knowledge, you know, having uh, classes on WhatsApp and Telegram. So this one, uh, huh. <laughs> some lectures fail to reduce time online. They are still doing it as a face-to-face, -face, like three hour lecture, three hours online. So at that time, students had back-to-back -back class still now, but they don't have, uh, they don't want, they disagree to reduce time online, okay? And yeah, sometimes it's just hard to, to stay focused too long looking at the screen. Mm. Uh, they send time drive, you know, sending materials. That's what we do too, I know. Uh, some of the lecturers that when they're AED and UMIT conducted the survey, uh, a lot of lecturers took that, you know, they, they were very kind enough to send to, to post materials to the students, printed that, printed the, the materials and send them to the students who couldn't reach. Okay. Infrastructure is uh, the hardware part. You know, um, I, I saw Dr. Hasbullah here. Um, yeah, yeah. So I took uh, inter instructional design uh, workshop with him and stuff. So we talk about how this hardware is very important to help the bandwidth of the internet okay the, even the, the the platform that you use you know to reduce the, the use of bandwidth those are important too. so here some decided to come up with um virtual or lab studio i think utlc has one uh, pisa has one if i'm not mistaken okay and a lot of schools are trying to to work on it too so upgrade our internet capacity for online okay i mean it, they start included that in the strategic plan uh, say so here the current internet at that time one gbps you know uh, this one of the universities not um i think in the central central zones that we are trying to upgrade it to six 
And I think now whether six is still <laughs> good or maybe obsolete, I'm not sure. Okay, so we are catering for the new norm. Uh, we created learning centers for learning spots, you know, have a proper, because some of the universities are technical universities that they need students to be there because they need to use the, all the equipment, all the machines, all the um, labs and stuff. So we said, okay, let's create. <laughs> they are creating uh, not from uh, learning centers and learning spots to enable that. Financial support, financial support. It's all about funding, okay? Uh, this is what we did, 6 million support pandemic, uh, B4, to help with the B40, some given 280K uh, budget with the infrastructure to, just to boost the infra infrastructure, uh, all this 40 gig. And we know like some companies also take that initiatives to provide. Here, teaching and learning center allocated funding, 150K. So I've never been, you know, I never get involved with budget a lot. And so I'm not sure whether how, how big is it, but for me, it's like there are a lot of fundings being allocated. MQA and professional body is <laughs> see whether MQA is allowed to make that, um, you know, or to relax some of the requirements or the standards, you know. So, um, Actually, yeah, MTA and those professional bodies like accountancy, architecture, though they are willing to, you know, to relax some of the requirements or change of assessment, especially, you know, but there should be evidence that the learning outcomes can be achieved. And uh, when this uh, evidence of learning outcome, of course, we talk about constructive alignment, we talk about uh, whether the assessment that we use, you know, to alternate or to replace the current standardized uh, licensure testing, for example, is equivalent because, you know, with assessment, a lot of noise with all alternative assessment, but they are willing. This one, some of the program rearranged courses because they have to postpone stuff. You know, these are the, 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 the major, the programs that being affected. Um, nursing, medical, engineering, counseling, because <laughs> no more face-to-face -face, uh, session stuff. Okay, so here we can see MKA is willing to relax the requirements to help, to accommodate, you know, but the, the part of like the, the evidence should be there, you know, the lesson outcomes, the learning, uh, the learning outcomes, you know, should also match with the assessment. You know? I mean, assessment should be matched. <laughs> the proposal will be like, hey, you got it wrong. <laughs> assessment should be you know, aligned with the lesson outcome because that's the purpose of the assessment. That's the purpose of how we relate uh, from course uh, learning outcome to the program learning outcome. Uh, okay, internship, how many? Okay, almost there, almost there. Uh, internship and practicum, again, called uh, some who are willing to allow students to work from home, some are not, you have to be there and we cannot take the risk as some of the leaders said. Uh, we try to have simulation-based practical, but see, you can see not many say that. Practical training being, you know, being um, what we call um, <laughs> the issues because students cannot come to school, uh, red zone and stuff. There you go, alternative assessment, uh, kind of, uh, Know, the change in assessment, you know, that's when they suggested alternative assessment, you know, no more final exam. And now we are actually, HEA always send us, what do you suggest to replace? Or are you maintaining the stuff? And we can see most, most, I don't say all, most are changing from final exam to coursework, you know. And misconception of grading, great inflation happened, when the lecturers, kasian, I mean, you know, what do you call it? They, yeah, the PT, they, at the same time, um, it's hard, you know, all, Coursework, most of the time, if you meet the criteria, you can get high scores, no problem. You get a lot of A's, you know, because they do not know how to align to CLO. They, the, list, the, list, the learning outcome is something and the assessment is something else. It's totally, totally uh, different. It happens. But some leaders, you know, some, you know, what's wrong if many students get A? Even if auditor comes and curious, as long as we design better revised coursework, you'll be better. Means you have to have evidence what which actually you know uh, tailored to that lesson plan okay so um, flexibility delivery but assessment is compulsory it's just the same okay that's why we are changing from final exam to continuous assessment um, 
uh, yeah, this is also, also a change and we will let lecturers to decide. Uh, that's the thing about the idea is uh, online assessment at that time. It's hard to, to conduct. You know, professional bodies, uh, even though they are willing to relax, but sometimes they just don't want to accept the students to do alternative assessment because a lot of noise and a lot of uh, factors need to be considered. Mm. Teaching practice, uh, this is when, uh, whether the CLOs, the alignment with the CLOs, you know, changing blended learning, like I said, a synchronous one, they are not willing, so the infrastructure couldn't support. So all this uh, online teaching, the pedagogical knowledge, it's not the technology part yet, how to align, because changing an assessment, changing, you know, teaching practice also changes and um, need to still meet the lesson outcome, the learning outcome. So uh, <laughs> explore different kind of online teaching, like some synchronous, synchronous, uh, yeah, upgraded, synchronous, synchronous again. To see future ready, they try. They start talking about more kind of flexible uh, curriculum, but that's actually you know being <laughs> said that okay, we are just going to do it slowly but surely. Uh, learning engagement, uh, students are tired. Students, you know, uh, but um, they are willing, but they are not. The, the house is not conducive. You know, learning at home and they miss campus life. The need to stay at home. Uh, the, the need to stay in campus, you know, to get that engagement is better. That's why we allow them to, you know, to have that, especially for those technical uh, universities when the lab is needed and that the learning spots. Students share their mind map. They have to speak 40 minutes for participation. This is what they are actually trying to move to student-centered learning. Students a lot of, uh, need to do a lot of stuff because they need to, to be able to, to to be engaged, of course, okay. Curriculum, uh -huh. this is when they talk about flexible curriculum. Curriculum is flexible, dynamic, but as long as it's still uh, what for, um, meet the program learning outcomes. Here, they are working on the final year students. Uh, the MOOC, again, the flexible, some people call it flexible education framework. The, Technical is different, so we need to stand how flexible, okay? They have satellite campus, micro-credentialing, okay? And we are also working on that. Okay, so you can see here, um, again, the, to sum up, the, we have these 12 dimensions subsumed now under two actually bigger umbrella. The leadership, motivation, human resource, technology, infrastructure, and financial support. This we call the enabler dimension. And then the one that can actually help teaching and learning dimension. These are all the teaching and learning dimension. But, <laughs> you know, while the leaders are trying to understand, to address, to govern all the intricate things, the uncertainties remain. <laughs> the one that, you know, going along, there will be a lot of uncertainties still. Uh, that's what they said. And we need to be adapt, be agile, <laughs> um, empower our staff. So that's the whole idea. That's what we found, <laughs> basically. So, and I think it's good to, to hear what do we suggest and what do they suggest from the literature and from our finding too. So now I pass the session to Dr. Norseha. Thank you. All right, but before that, uh, thank you so much, Dr. Nuliana. Uh, maybe, um... I'd like to open to maybe questions from the audience. Oh yeah. If there's maybe one question. Okay, if there's none, then uh, Dr. Nuliana, I'm just wondering how did you manage to collect data during the pandemic? <laughs> okay, I, uh, yeah, the, the, collect, the data collection, it's everything's online, you know. We, yeah, we, we ask the the leaders, you know, approach them through their personal assistant, do the video conference. But how do they, what 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 do they prefer uh, to to use? Sometimes some prefer Zoom, some prefer uh -huh, Webex and stuff. Um, this kind of uh, preference and uh, it's it's all actually online, online, online. Uh, 
and some even WhatsApp. I remember one of the deputy vice chancellors, uh, we, we were wet stopping. <laughs> so technology is, is uh, the key here. All right. So thank you, uh, Dr. Nuliana. Okay, let's thank move on. Dr. Dr. Nuliana. Yes, uh, uh, Prof. Yeah, I'm Rusayani here. Uh -huh. uh, you know, I have a, actually before this, I have a meeting. So I just uh, join a letter on uh, with your discussion here. Okay, a little bit, you know, in terms of the student, uh, the students and the lecturers, when we talk about the online uh, teaching, uh, the online learning, uh, because recently, uh, if you go through the Facebook, for example, we can see uh, in the new seat, uh, you know, uh, students are uh, talking about uh, not coming back uh, to the university. Now we are asking them for the next semester for all the students to come back uh, to be on campus. And uh, they said now oh, we, we don't want to go back. We, you know, uh, we just, uh, we, we, are, uh, we are, you know, we, we, we sort of uh, okay with the online learning and so on. And in fact, even the lecturers also uh, just not, you know, they don't want to come back to the campus. They prefer to work from home. Uh, this is the things uh, totally different from the beginning uh, when I, I still remember on the 19th uh, March 2020 when we declare, you know, the campus, the closure of the campus and so on. So, uh, but on the other side, uh, people are saying that, uh, that we have problem with the online learning, the problem with the mental health and so on. How, how do you see, you know, this transition from uh, the acceptance of the lecturers and the students uh, in terms of the online learning? Wow, thank you, Prof. Yeni. This is, uh, <laughs> I, I have a personal thoughts and I hope so based on this, uh, our findings. At that time, our, our research was conducted like uh, in uh, 2020, um, mid-2020, and then we disseminated the findings like 2021. And at that time, uh, technical universities are talking about this engagement and stuff like students want to come back, they need to use the tool. And I know like after that, now it's 2022, uh, we adapt to PASU, I think, Alhamdulillah. And, um, Back in the days, uh, people are people are struggling, but then they struggle part from face to face to online, and then uh, now I think I have you know based on what you're saying about the what happened on social media, people are becoming now <laughs> they are adapting to the social to, to to the life that they had to struggle earlier. Now go, coming back <laughs> to the so the campus is also a new struggle. <laughs> um, that's my point, and that's what um, from at least the technical universities. Uh, I'm not sure how they are. Do, you know why they, if they don't want to come back? I'm not sure how they would like to do that because simulation and stuff. You know those are actually expensive and stuff. They need to come back. Um, but in terms of general speaking, those who can work from home while actually you know taking care of stuff <laughs> and be safe. Why not? Why not? Because we struggle to become what we, we are here what in this state. So why not? We just maintain and try to move forward, you know, with, with as we are becoming comfortable with the technology, with the process. That's my uh, yeah, I, mean, I think, yeah. Uh, doctor, I think for me, uh, you know, uh, the value that we offer to the students, uh, I think in terms of the role of higher education, is more than, uh, you know, just uh, acquiring uh, knowledge and skill. But when you are at the campus, you know, the students, they can mix together, the socializing, you know, these are some of the value. Uh, if we talk in economics term, we call it as uh, the consumption motive of education. So this, these are the things I, I think if we are going uh, totally online, uh, people, uh, I mean, the students will be lacking in terms of this. Uh, that's how I perceive, uh, you know, the, the role of education beyond uh, just uh, knowledge and skills. Yeah, I prefer say any because I think uh, the curriculum itself is an experience. So the learning experience is online and different from being on campus. Totally, totally uh, true. 
Yeah. Okay, maybe any thoughts from Prof. Uh, Prof. 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 Zia or Dr. Siha on this too? Okay. <laughs> All right, maybe we will have more of this discussion afterwards. Uh, let's move on to Dr. Nosiha, who's going to share on the implications of the findings of this research. Dr. Nosiha? Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And a very good morning to everyone. Yeah. So inshallah, I'm going to share with you uh, some suggestions for the practitioner based on the research that we have conducted uh, last year. Yeah? Okay, let me give me some time to share my screen. Okay, I don't know what happened. I cannot share my screen today. Yeah, can someone, do, Professor, can you please share your screen so that I can? I can. Uh, yes, let please. Me, let me do that. Okay. Is this going to be the same, right? From what we discussed, nothing changed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Suggestion for practitioner. All right. Okay. So as uh, what has been shared by Dr. Noliana about our research findings, yeah, based on the analysis that we have uh, made to the information that we have gathered, yeah, so that uh, we have come out with uh, 12 dimensions, yeah, uh, as mentioned by Dr. Noliana, and then this 12 dimension is divided into two yeah, uh, main dimensions, which are teaching and learning dimension plus and also this, the second dimension is the enabler dimension. So, all right, so, all right, okay, I'm going to start with the teaching and learning dimension. Yeah, okay, so uh, some suggestions that we can make yeah, in terms related to the curriculum. Yeah? So here we, uh, okay, before that, uh, these are all the suggestions that we have made. Yeah, actually, we have scrutinized, and the team member has scrutinized all the information uh, that was uh, made available uh, during uh, the pandemic, uh, the MCO. Yeah? Even during that period, uh, uh, when we started our research, there's a, uh, there quite a lot of numbers of uh, papers yeah? uh, or information uh, literature review that made available relating to the COVID-19 yeah? so that we make, uh, uh, we make a full use of those information that the research that has been conducted by uh, researchers, researchers from all over the world yeah? and then we also go through uh, the suggestion made by the United Nations, UNESCO, we also review MQA uh, uh, documents as well as we go to, uh, we check also the website from local universities yeah, what are the things that uh, the university has uh, uh, done yeah, uh, in order to uh, uh, adapt with the new situations yeah so when you're talking about a teaching and learning dimension yeah so we start with curriculum yeah? Okay, when you're talking about curriculum, yeah, so there are actually there are many suggestions that has been made. Yeah, so in many information, yeah, may, uh, many approaches that has been uh, used by various universities all over the world. But uh, considering, yeah, uh, considering the our culture, yeah, considering uh, the in, uh, when we uh, relate it into the Malaysian context, yeah, so we think that uh, we propose that these are the four things that is uh, prominent for us to consider 
uh, at the moment. Yeah. So the first thing uh, under the curriculum, there are four things. There are micro credential module. Yeah. Or maybe uh programs. Yeah. Uh, should consider. Yeah. Should take uh one steps. Yeah. In order to uh design or to offer a micro credential module. Yeah. So our program. Yeah. Uh. Uh. Maybe we can break down. Yeah. Uh. The the uh the structure yeah, uh, that can suitable with the micro credentials module yeah. so as we know a yeah, micro credential where yeah, uh the organizations the high institutions can offer a digital certificate yeah uh, so in order to uh where all the i mean all the students the learners yeah the learners can actually join the class via online yeah and then uh they attended a few uh, they attended a structured modules yeah okay and then after a certain period or maybe that's uh, the period uh how long they're going to finish the program uh is entirely depends on what are the knowledge or the degrees or the skill that we want to uh, give to the learners. Yeah? Okay, so that's about macro credential. Yeah, uh, this I think is uh, which uh, macro credentials. I'm expecting that's going to be a uh, popular yeah, in the future. Yeah? So that in fact the advantages of uh, one of the advantages of uh, offering macro credentials that we can offer it. Uh, uh, all I mean, uh, it's borderless, yeah. Uh, so that anybody, uh, everybody from all over the world, yeah, can also join the program. Yeah? Okay, so that in fact they can uh, attend the class according, adjusting to their own time. Yeah, when, whenever they are, uh, have a, a free time, so that they can uh, look at into the module and study by themselves. Yeah. All right, and then uh, develop self-directed learning content. Uh, this is, I think, is very important because uh, during the pandemic, and then I, I, inshallah, in the future, maybe yeah, uh, this, so our interaction with the student, student or our face-to-face -face interaction system may be uh, getting lesser and lesser. Eh? So that it is important for us to uh, educate our students to learn by themselves or independent. But uh, as we can see now uh, from the uh, findings that we uh, found uh, from the research, uh, in fact, uh, still the student has to be uh, uh, educated. Uh, they have to be uh, advised ataupun, uh, to be uh, guided yeah, uh, closely by the lecturers. Yeah? Uh, so this is a uh, burden sum yeah, to impact to the lecturers and also the learners yeah, because of the time frame, because of the numbers of the students that we have. Yeah? So in order for us to go to individual students is very difficult if we want to uh, guide them yeah, personally. So that is important for us to actually uh, educate yeah, the students or train the students to self-directed learning content. Yeah? So. Uh, Okay, number three is revised teaching contact, uh, contact hours. This is uh, to balance up between the synchronous and asynchronous. Yeah? So, in fact, when we're talking about, uh, we, we suppose, yeah, uh, we're supposed to have a face to face class. Yeah? Those uh, 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 modules, uh, sorry, those programs that uh, decided to have a hybrid program, for example, yeah? we're talking about UM scenario. So, we're supposed to have uh, some of the classes maybe choose to have face to face, and then we have to sort of like like uh, we're supposed to start in uh, by 27 of March, but considering the cases that is increased at the moment, yeah, it's increasing at the moment so that we have to postpone yeah, uh, until uh, uh, after after the fifth week. Yeah? So we're going to start uh, to see them face to face, yeah? inshallah. Yeah? Okay, but this is the thing that's uh, in order for... Uh, for us yeah, to actually really plan our teaching and learning activities. Yeah. So it is important that uh, the university yeah, uh, to revise the contact hours. Yeah, so that we have, uh, we know, uh, because it, it is, this is going to if so affect the assessment method, yeah? so which I'm going to discuss it later, yeah? the assessment uh, method. So redefine blended learning. Yeah? Uh, so this is very interesting yeah, that we found during our research that uh, that time, yeah, uh, that time uh, we considered uh, uh, every university is so happy when we say that uh, all university the, the the percentage of blended learning is increasing during the during uh, the MCO. Eh? So this is because 
probably 100% of the class is going uh, online yeah uh, so uh, in this in this context uh, some of the i think one of our in uh, partic uh, no, interviewers uh, interviewees yeah, says that this is not a uh, blended learning this is emergency yeah, blended learning yeah so that is actually it's still face to face yeah it's just that we did online blended learning is 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 is, is actually is about yeah how many percent that you are using online and how many percent yeah, out of 100 percent how many percent you allocate for the uh face to face yeah even even is online uh face to face how much uh, uh how much hour that you want to allocate for the face to face yeah and then uh how many hours that you're going to spend for uh for the students yeah, uh, to, to do their own uh, and by just uh, browsing the materials that we've given to them yeah, on online. So that the definition of uh, blended learning need to be redefined. Yeah. Okay, next. Next slide, we're going to talk about teaching practices. Yeah, okay, teaching practices that uh, that we are, uh, this is very, uh, uh interesting of mine yeah? i think of all of us yeah? so the teaching practices what we have to do yeah? uh, what are the suggestions that i can we can uh, give here is that uh, we have to encourage student centered learning yeah? students uh, directed learning policy need to be on place yeah and then uh, the student need to be aware yeah about their roles yeah so that we have to sort of like educate the responsibility the accountability of learning to the students yeah? uh, the students uh, cannot just say that uh, the lecturers have to do this and that, yeah, but they also have to sort of like uh, uh, really understand what does it mean by student-centered learning. Yeah? And then uh, also to the lecturers, yeah, you have to, uh, lecturers also have to understand uh, the meaning of student-centered learning. Yeah? All right, so uh, local local and international collaboration in teaching and learning. Yeah. So this is the advantages that we uh, actually, we should utilize yeah, when we have a class online. So we can collaborate, yeah? we can collaborate with the, our international uh, uh, partners or we can collaborate with all our networking uh, at the international level at the international university to uh, uh, collaborate in terms of teaching and learning yeah we can start contacting our friends our friends that we are while we are studying life uh, a long time ago or maybe our students yeah, so that uh, our PhD students yeah so that we can have collaboration in terms of learning by uh, all right, and then enhance soft, uh, soft skill learning activity. Uh, I think this is the one that I want to uh, respond to Prof. Yadi's questions just now. Eh? Uh, when we're talking about uh, human capital, we're not talking about only uh, the content, knowledge, content knowledge, knowledge that they acquired during uh, while they are at the university university offline or online yeah so we have to also enhance the soft skill uh, learning activities has been highlighted by Dr. Noliana just now yeah, uh, when we discuss about the findings. Yeah, one of the uh, challenges yeah, that been uh, faced by the lecturers uh, is uh, to deliver yeah, to deliver or to nurture the student soft skill learning activities. Yeah. So uh, because we have a limited uh, uh, I mean uh, creativity yeah, when we are doing uh, everything is online. Yeah. Uh, but I think for the young generation, uh, maybe this is not a problem to them. Yeah? But for uh, the more senior lecturers, yeah? uh, in terms of age, I think, yeah, uh, to enhance the uh, student soft skill learning yeah, via online per se is uh, something that is really uh, a big challenge to us. Yeah? Okay. Uh, and then uh, I think this is uh, as I, I do agree with Prof uh, Rosayani, soft skill is very very important. Yeah, so because uh, soft skill is actually uh, for them. Yeah, uh, to have yeah? in order for them to survive. Yeah, uh, while uh, when they are really graduated from our university. Yeah? Okay, especially when we, when we're talking about communication skill, yeah? communication skill, the communication skill in a real life. Yeah, dealing with the people we who are not uh, within the social circle of a student themselves. Yeah? Even when you're doing it online, yeah? uh, the, the social engagement among the students is very limited. 
Yeah. So with that, yeah, uh, I think it's important yeah, for all the lecturers, yeah, all the uh, universities, yeah, in order to uh, really taking care of this student soft scheme. Yeah. And then improvise, synchronize, and uh, uh, synchronize mode of teaching. Yeah. Okay, so uh, uh, so I think I don't want to elaborate on that because synchronized and as I mentioned, yeah, uh, we have to balance in terms of the times. Yeah? All right, and then uh, we're talking about alternative assessment. Oh, sorry, sorry, learning engagement. Yeah, learning engagement, deep and digital learning engagement. Uh, improve learning support system yeah, and then develop more active integrated learning activities and outcomes. Yeah. Uh, so uh, learning engagement among the students was found that very uh, very limited while we are doing online. Yeah. So that uh, this is a challenge as I mentioned just now, this is a challenge when you're doing everything online. Uh, we feel that yeah, uh, even though our student is actually spread all over Malaysia, or maybe uh, some of our students are even in abroad, yeah, in terms of the geographical, they are se uh, separate all over the places. Yeah? But then when we do, we're talking about lending engagement, yeah, uh, when they are too separated, it's difficult to have a, a really yeah, a, a full engagement from the students. Yeah, they are become shy, yeah? or maybe uh, they they decided not to talk. Yeah, while we are conducting the class. Yeah, so I would like to encourage. Yeah, uh, we are this research would like to suggest. Yeah, in order to uh, uh, to have more engagement from the student, uh, they have to uh, lecturers. Yeah, universities has to encourage. Yeah, ataupun develop yeah, more active integrated learning activities and outcomes. Yeah. How maybe we can attend more trainings, yeah, on uh how to get uh most uh to get uh, active participation from the student. Okay, next alternative assessment. Can we move to okay? All right. So when we're talking about alternative assessment, they are actually highly correlated yeah, with the teaching activities, yeah, talking about uh, student engagement, yeah, uh, so that in order to be fair to in order to be fair to all or to, to, to the learners especially, yeah, so that it is important, uh, it is uh, I think it's a high time for us to consider yeah, or maybe it is a high time for us to really look into yeah, developing flexible assessment. Yeah, uh, not only focusing on pen and pencil, not only focusing on pre student presentation. Student presentation is important, yeah, but uh, maybe the way that uh, how they're going to do the presentation, the material that they are prepared, those are the things needs to be considered into the assessment criteria. Yeah, and then uh, equity, fairness, inclusions. Yeah, especially yeah when we're talking about uh, uh those who are very unfortunate when they have uh very limited yeah, uh internet bandwidth at their home. Yeah, so that uh it is difficult for them to actually uh, to assess to some of the materials. Yeah. Uh, learning materials, yeah, and then when we uh talking about uh if we want the students to develop uh something yeah, uh, that requires a lot of data yeah, so that they have we have to consider all those factors yeah okay uh, next um, excuse me um, I'm not sure where the this noise is coming from <laughs> uh, is it uh, but I see that everyone's is uh, mute so uh, whoever is not mute please uh, do so. That's a distracting noise that's, you know, like rubbing or something. Yes, that's causing uh, Dr. Nosiha not able to speak uh, clearly. Or maybe Dr. Nosiha, maybe you were moving something. I don't know. Anything, yeah. paper, no? None? <laughs> okay, all right. Now, uh, please continue. Sorry about that. Okay, okay. I think, okay. Uh, Oling, can you move to the next slide, please? All right, internship and practicum. Yeah. Okay, in terms of internship and practicum, as mentioned, uh, based on the findings that we found, uh, in fact, many still uh, prefer yeah, to have face-to-face -face or the students need to be at the real yeah, uh, site yeah, of the 
practical space. Yeah? But then due to the situations that we're facing, some of the students have to do uh, practicum, but uh, online. Yeah? They have to still stay at, at their place and then do it online. Yeah? So get the instructions from the supervisors. Yeah? Okay, so in here, yeah, so that what we can suggest that revise the industrial connectors, connectedness strategy. Yeah, uh, alternative project to replace industrial attachment. Yeah, in fact, uh, some of the universities has already uh, based on the interview that we found. Yeah, uh, some of the university already considered uh, alternative project. Yeah, to replace the industrial attachment. I think that's that's a very uh, one of the good suggestions. Yeah? So at least uh, the students has uh, uh, focus. Yeah, uh, or maybe uh, can also uh, polish other type of skill. Yeah, uh, in terms of doing the alternative project. Yeah, the project can be uh, they have to develop something. Yeah, they still have to attach to the organization. The organization has to giving them some tasks. Yeah, for them to uh, to do the project. Yeah, and then maybe they can do the presentation. Yeah, uh, later on. Yeah, after they have finished the project. Yeah, okay, home base or off, off site uh, research project. Yeah, and virtual internship. I think uh, virtual internship. Uh, we have uh, some of the. Maybe, yeah. Uh, no, no, I see. Maybe, yeah. Maybe in the future, still uh, very uh, valid, yeah. Because uh, virtual uh, internship, as I said, yeah, uh, they can still uh, doing it at home, yeah, but then the project has to come from the uh, organization that they uh, attach uh, when they are doing the practicum. Okay, next. All right. Uh, okay. In terms of uh, MQA and uh, professional bodies, yeah. So uh, this is uh, related to the maybe the uh, uh, the auditing uh, organiz uh, industry. Uh, sorry, organiz auditing uh, organizations. Yeah. So uh, considered yeah to increase collaboration with local and international professional bodies. Yeah. Why this is important? Because uh, when we're talking about quality of teaching and learning and standards, that's something that we cannot. Uh, uh, compromise. Yeah? Even though that we have to do it, uh, the class online virtually, yeah? or maybe we're going to have a hybrid class in the future. Yeah, but in terms of the quality and standards of education, that is something that we still have to stick to the principle. We cannot compromise on the quality, yeah? because they are going to be our future leaders, our the students are the future leaders. So that we must make sure that whatever that they uh, acquired, uh, either the content knowledge or the skill that they acquired, they yeah, are uh, still uh, at par with the quality and standard that has been set up yeah, by either MQA or any other professional bodies. Yeah. So that in that note, yeah, so that we have to, uh, the MQA or the professional bodies or the auditing organizations yeah, need to consider to come up with a new criteria yeah, of a code of teaching and learning as well as assessment yeah, and also audit standards. Yeah. So uh, as Dr. Lena also mentioned just now that uh, even though yeah, MQA or professional bodies, they are relaxed, yeah, they are giving some, uh, uh, some uh, uh, rooms yeah, uh, for the uh, universities, uh, local universities, yeah, uh, in order to uh, adopt with the new situation mm -hmm. yeah, or relax some of the policies and the procedures. However, when we're talking about quality and standards, they still have to come up with a, a code or teaching uh, learning, a code of teaching and learning assessment that is uh, at par with the standard before, yeah, or even, even higher than what we had before. Okay. All right. Now we're talking about uh, the, the enabler. Yeah, the enabler uh, dimension is where uh, the support system yeah, that can uh, also uh, uh, the support system that uh, supposed to help yeah, or to boost up the teaching and learning uh, dimension. Yeah. Okay, so here the leadership. Yeah, we are talking about the leadership. If we can go back uh, to what happened uh, when we started the MCO yeah, uh, on the 18 March of 2020. Yeah. So during that time, we are supposed to go for semester break for one week semester break. Yeah, and then we hope that after the semester break, everything will be 
go back to normal, yeah, hoping that the COVID-19 uh, is going to decrease, but what we hope for is actually not really happen. Yeah? So that, uh, okay, during that period, yeah, uh, the leaders, yeah, the top leaders of the, the universities that we interviewed, yeah, uh, as Dr. Nelena mentioned again, there are some, they are having a chaos at the university, uh, still a new experience for them, yeah, and nothing like this has, uh, not, nothing like this has happened before, yeah? so that uh, don't know what to do, yeah, what other things to do, there are so many things, there are so many factors they have to be considered yeah, uh, before they, uh, they start the class. We we're talking about the security of the people is our top uh, priority that time. Yeah? And then we're talking about the readiness of the lecturers to do the uh, class online, uh, whether we have been equipped with all the technologies, yeah? whether we, uh, the lecturers are already uh, familiar with the technologies that they can, get, uh, they can use. Yeah? Okay, so that... Uh, uh, there's so many yeah, uh, chaos, don't know what to do. But yeah, what, whatever uh, things that are going to happen in the future. Yeah, so uh, this is the suggestion that we want to make to the leaders. Yeah? Be calm and have a strong mindset. Yeah? Don't panic. Yeah? Uh, that's the word. Yeah? Don't panic. Calm. And you have to be a strong mindset uh, in terms of look at any event that happened yeah, as a... Uh, as a task that you have to deal with. Yeah? And then a proactive uh, leadership, leadership style. Yeah? So that proactive, uh, we are talking about, uh, it is, uh, okay, some of the university, they think about the worst scenario. Yeah? Uh, they, don't, uh, they don't think about uh, what, we, what, we, what we found yeah, from our research was very interesting. There's a uh, university say that, uh, what happened if uh, something worse happened than what we expected? Yeah. Uh, so those are the what we consider as a proactive leadership. Yeah. So if if the class cannot be on, yeah, uh, face to face after two weeks of the semester break. Yeah. So we have we still uh then the leader have to take a proactive actions to uh to do something that is uh. The class need to be on, yeah. Uh, or the university has need to be carried on, yeah, but in a new way and form of uh, dealing it, yeah. All right. So network of teams is very very important. Get a proper advice from an expert. Yeah? When we're talking about when we're dealing with uh, medical issues, COVID is medical issue. So the team need be uh in your team, yeah. There's uh there must be a medical uh expert in the team in order to advise what to do, yeah. So uh, it is important to have a yeah, uh, various view yeah, uh, in terms of uh, uh, to help yeah, uh, the leader to make the decisions. Yeah, effective communication, yeah, distributing a leadership. Yeah, uh, so a leader need to also empower yeah, uh, people, uh, their staff, trust them. Yeah, in order to make a decision. Yeah? Okay, effective communication. Uh, yeah, again, yeah. Uh, be 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 uh transparent to the staff. Yeah? The most important thing that know how to make your staff calm down. Yeah. All right. Okay, next. Okay, motivation. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Sarima, how how much time do I still have? Uh, okay. Um <laughs> uh all right, hold on. Um you still have a little bit more because uh, next we're going to have the interactive uh, activities, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, there are, uh, there are quite five more dimensions. I'll try to speed up. Okay, motivation. We're talking about collaboration. We're talking about physical support. Ah, this is very important. Yeah, when we're talking about... Uh, uh, I, I, I'm uh, please allow me to use this word, yeah, mental health issues. Yeah, uh, so uh, I think it's getting uh, higher and higher. Yeah, in fact, um, uh, you know, uh, some uh, because of this uh pandemic, yeah, when we we have to isolate yourself, isolate yourself in either at home, yeah, or maybe uh, up, uh maybe at the office again. Yeah, we have to uh accommodate with the new uh, SOP, yeah? social distancing, yeah? and then uh, 
we notice that yeah, some some uh, very ease about the SOP, some are very particular about the SOP, yeah? and then uh, somehow or other, this kind of scenario can create tensions, yeah? not only among the the, the university staff, yeah, the, the, but also to everybody that actually facing it, yeah? and and the students, yeah, uh, we hope that uh, I think yeah, most of the university has already, uh, based on the research that we uh, gathered the information, yeah, uh, most university has really pay uh, give uh, uh, much attention on these issues, yeah, which is very good, yeah, the. Uh, and we also would like to suggest yeah, set up a 24 hours counseling call center. Yeah, I think when uh, this uh, this one, yeah, when we uh, we notice that university or uh, abroad, yeah, they have this 24 hours counseling uh, call center where the students or anybody that have a problem can call the centers uh, 24 hours. Yeah. Okay, next. Human resources. Yeah. Human resource, yeah. So we have here the new policies uh, need to be in place, yeah. Uh, add a new requirement for recruitment, yeah. Uh, so everybody need to know how to use the IT, yeah, and know how to uh, the teaching and learning skills for the lecturers, yeah. And then uh, criteria of selection for lecturers should align with the current situation. Yeah, uh, maybe one of the criteria, and yeah, maybe this is uh, those that related in the recruitment. Uh, so need to include a criteria, yeah, criteria that uh, uh, IT, uh, IT literacy, uh, literacy is more is, is important nowadays. Yeah, it is not uh, an option, but it is a must. Yeah, I think the criteria need to be in place. Yeah. All right, uh, design new human resources work ecosystem and policy. Yeah? So that uh, with the new, uh, if we have a new ecosystem eh, and policy, hope that yeah, uh, the staff will be motivated, uh, staff know how to cope with uh, whatever situation comes in the future. Okay, next. In terms of the technology, yeah, we hope that yeah, this is something that I like to uh, highlight. Yeah? Develop virtual facilities classroom. Yeah, uh, this is uh, I think we will we will take uh, the virtual facilities classroom where we have all the equipments, the camera, the microphone, yeah, and then the swiddle, yeah, so that we can walk around. Yeah? But uh, that's that's I think we can see the future. Uh, universities uh, need to have these uh, facilities. Yeah, in order to uh, uh, to accommodate uh, with a new uh, form of demand yeah, in this the new order of the world yeah, uh, virtual uh, reality yeah okay so next uh, we're talking about the infrastructure yeah upgrade the teaching and learning IT facilities web 2.0 subscriptions yeah uh, maybe university uh, start to consider us to also not only uh, giving the space yeah uh, uh, for the online like webex or zoom but also to consider to subscribe yeah, uh, some of the teaching and learning uh, webs yeah, uh, in order to make uh, teaching and learning more uh, engaging yeah all right, and then next is financial support. I think that's the last criteria for an for the enabler. All right, so of course when we're talking about improving the facilities, improving the infrastructure, yeah. So we we we, we cannot escape yeah, from talking about increase increase the budget. Yeah. So of course we need more budget for teaching and learning. Yeah. To uh. In the future, yeah. So because we need more funding to facilitate the, the IT, yeah, we need uh, more funding to improve the network. Uh, sorry, the internet bandwidth. Yeah. So, I think that's about next. I think, okay, that's the conclusion. Yeah. So, I think that's about all the suggestions that this research wants to uh, share. Yeah, with all the participants today. Yeah. So that we hope, yeah, uh, based on the sharing session here uh, on the suggestion, so that it will help yeah, uh, to us yeah, to understand the concerns of the academic leaders when we're facing decision to cope with the VUCA world. Yeah. Okay, with that, I think I pass back to uh, Dr. Sari to continue. Thank you. 
Thank you, Dr. Nosiha. Um, that's a lot, actually, that um, um, a lot of imp implications and suggestions, which I think we have to take heed of. All right, let's, I think, move on. I think, Prof. Fauzia, you have this interactive session uh, coming on. Yeah? All right. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, okay. So I'm passing this back to you. Uh, but uh, the problem is I don't know which slide to click on now. I'm just afraid that it doesn't move again. Uh, okay, let's see. Yeah. See? Mm, okay. It's not appearing in my knee lah. Siapa eh? <coughs> okay. Um. Maybe Dr. Oli may have. No, because the, the thingy is with me. Uh, kenapa? Tolonglah, Ya Allah, Ya Tuhan ku. Amin. Maybe I can take a few questions before I get this sorted. I can do both. Uh, um, ask questions while waiting while waiting for me to get this yeah, sorted. Yeah, sure. So maybe questions from the audience. While while waiting for the audience to you know think of a question, uh, uh, Dr. Nosiha, um, how far are we ready to conduct hybrid um, learning, especially here in UUM? Hmm. A good question, Dr. Sari. Oh, I have to think. Huh? Uh, okay, this is what I'm going to answer, maybe based on my view, yeah, based on my observation. Yeah. Okay, uh, when we're talking about hybrid, yeah, uh, Dr. Sari, let me clarify the questions with you. Are you talking about the hybrid in terms of teaching and learning approach or hybrid classroom? Well, um, I don't know. Um, maybe both. Oh, maybe both. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're talking about hybrid. Yeah, I'm talking. Uh, what I think the UUM going to have, uh, the hybrid class. The definition. This is what I understand. Yeah, what I understood. Uh, the meaning of hybrid in uh, in in the UUM context. Yeah, where uh the course yeah uh, the program uh giving a uh, a choice to have how many uh, courses that going to have face-to-face -face class, but the face-to-face -face class is actually is 100% has to face-to-face, -face, yeah? Or maybe uh, some of the courses choose to have a fully online. So the combination of fully 100% online and fully 100% face-to-face is a considered hybrid. Am I correct, Dr. Sari? <laughs> Uh, the participant can help me to clarify uh, this, uh, the, the meaning of the hybrid. Eh? Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, how far the UM uh, is ready for the hybrid of, of what I've understood? Eh? So uh, they have given uh, some allocation. I think even uh, every uh, school has been given a space. Eh? Or a DKG a room yeah, where they can conduct the class. Yeah. Okay, like like myself, I actually uh, I was told to have a face to face class. Yeah, my class is actually is somewhere in KG six. Yeah, but uh, we have to postpone yeah, uh, until the six uh, after the semester break. Yeah, we're going to have a face to face. Yeah. Okay, so if this is the kind of hybrid that we're talking about, yeah, uh, there are two issues here that the UUM has to consider yeah, when we're talking about ready. When you're talking about ready, are we ready in terms of the technology? I think whatever technology that we have at the moment in the uh, DKG or the classroom that we have before, I think enough yeah, for, the, uh, for us to have the 
the class face to face. Yeah, online I think uh should be no problem. They can continue with whatever they have. It's just that they have to consider whatever I've suggested just now. Eh? Considered about the redesign. Uh, we're talking about higher alert redesign. Eh? We're talking redesign the alternative assessment, redesign the learning activities to to make sure that students are more engaged and the assessment is fair to the students. Yeah. Okay. That's uh okay. When we're talking about uh, we are talking more, uh, the concern is, I think, more on the face to face. Yeah. Okay. When we're talking about the readiness, I think the classroom is ready. Yeah. Uh, the, the technology that we have, I think, is enough, yeah, sufficient for us to conduct the face to face class. Yeah. Uh, but I think, in terms of the uh, security issue, yeah, uh, the security issue, I think UUM already set up. Yeah? We have a, a department yeah, ataupun unit who talking care about uh, unit bencana and risiko. Yeah? I believe that they have assessed all the, uh, the risk that we have to face when we are going to uh, face the student uh, note, uh, face to face, yeah? uh, interpersonal uh, face to face uh, back. Uh, in the in maybe in May, yeah, okay. Uh, right. That's okay. that's I think should be the answer. When we're talking about hybrid classroom, that's a different story, yeah. Hybrid okay. classroom meaning the meaning of hybrid classroom is where yeah we unable face to face student yeah in a classroom and the remote student remote student I mean uh, let's say like example we have like forty student in the class yeah forty student in the class maybe like yeah, thirty student uh, face to face with us yeah, uh, I mean uh, they can see us personally yeah but uh, maybe another ten student they are uh, they are in their at their, uh, their home yeah or maybe they are not good uh, maybe not feeling well at that time they can still have uh, join the class uh, via online. Uh, at their at their room yeah, at the um so this is what i consider a hybrid classroom yeah uh, for a hybrid classroom uh, i'm not sure whether how far the university has already uh, equipped with the that facilities the facilities that we need of course yeah, we need a camera we need a proper microphone yeah we need um Maybe a swiddle because when the lecturer in the class they tend to walk around. You know, when you have activities, you have to walk around. Uh, uh, and uh, of of course, the lecturer cannot hold the cap the 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 handphone or the anything that uh, really uh, camera eh, that she needs to carry with her or her him eh, everywhere that uh, she goes around eh, in the class. So I think we need the equipment. Uh, they call it swiddle. Yeah, that. That can um the that that equipment yeah, that device can actually uh, follow where yeah, uh, the lecturer is actually moving. Yeah. Okay, thank I you so much. Uh, yeah? okay. All right, okay, thank you. Maybe we can talk about it more later. I think Prof. Ozia is ready. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank so. you, um, Dr. Sari, and thank you, Dr. Norsiha, for the uh, for elaborating on the on the importance of uh, getting ourselves ready uh, because the post-pandemic post is no longer a post-pandemic. It's already part of endemic. We're, it's here to stay and we just got to make sure that we know what we're doing. Right. Um, just a little bit of before, uh, for the sake of discussion, um, I posed a, a few questions, maybe actually two. Um, if you could help me to those who are in, the, in, in, this, for, um, in this group, and if they're also in the FB, if they can um, help me to um, answer the question. So the first question is, what would be your main challenges to prepare yourself and your institution when facing post-COVID-19? Um, when you, Your institution will be, for those maybe if I have people in the management team that would also um, be able to um, share their, their main challenge, you know? when um, doing this. So far, there are only two people uh, sending. And while, um, Dr. Sari, is it okay for me to look at the chat and also um, uh, answer, answer the, the question? Yeah, yeah, sure. And uh, the chat in the chat, there's one uh, comment here uh, from Dr. Nurul Hisa. Saya tak perasan sama ada gender is part of the investigation atau tak. 
or this is about the research? Um, well, uh, we we were targeting on the leaders, so we were not looking at the gender. So the leaders, to by default, lah, and naturally, in 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 most um, institution of higher learning, we find that we have to interview more male than female, um, um, because they are the leaders in in the institution. So, um, so gender was not part of our our concern we were more concerned about finding out what were the leaders considering um, when they had to prepare themselves in their institution uh, to face the pandemic and and how do they um, you know uh, how do they go about doing doing that adapt adaptation uh, with regards to the curriculum and whatever that they have Aligning it to the curriculum that they have actually developed. Does that answer your question, Dr. Riza? Uh, itulah sebab tadi tengok yang yang nak tanya juga uh, muda-muda tu. Tapi lepas tu Dr. Nusihah dah sebut tentang apa ni? Psikologi tu kan, psychological help tu. Uh, sebab uh, gender kan dia respond differently to to situations dan macam-macam uh, tadi lah macam saya tengok oh uh, the presenter selalu looking good <laughs> so kita nak masuk kelas kan so, semua macam pergi make up make up make up dulu so I just wonder macam apa cara lelaki I don't I don't know whether kan sebab bila bila online ni you are you have tak tahu lah macam ni duk tengok muka you macam oh, Allah aku macam you know tak bersemangat hari ni sebab you can see kalau dekat depan kelas you you tak nampak lah muka you tapi kalau you camera <laughs> So you know, yeah. so benda-benda macam tu, it's um dia boleh impact juga lah, dia boleh macam you know. Tapi orang tak sedar diri kan, uh, orang tak pasang yeah. kata yang kat atas tu pakai kot, kat bawah tu mungkin pakai kain pelikat je kan. Ha, ha, macam you are not 100% kan kat tangan. So <laughs> tak tahulah, you you are more aware of of you know things that you you don't really consider dalam dalam keadaan biasa, pengajaran biasa. Yeah. Um, I guess so. Um, uh, people will be looking at at their, uh, yeah lah. Dah dia tak nampak pelajar pelajar dia kan. So the students you nampak nama saja. And the only person yang dia nampak bercakap dengan dia lah diri dia. Um, so that's the reason why. Oh, I didn't look good now. I got to go and put some makeup ke apa kan. Uh-huh. So um, that's that's it. Tapi kalau everybody uh, buka kamera. Uh, Naturally, as educators, we'll be looking at the cues yeah. of our students' facial expression to mm. see whether they are with us, without us. Uh, dah ketinggal belakang, tak buka, tak buka. I mean, tak masuk gear lagi ke? So, and we can actually um, ask those kind of questions to our students when we feel um, we need to get more information about whether they are they, they are with us or not. So that is the setback of not being able to switch on the videos lah. Sebab itulah kat negara maju, there's no such thing as just nama saja tak buka video. Because they have the the infrastructure um, to facilitate uh, apa ni, teaching and learning. So much so that you are required to switch on your video when classes are on. But they are also very concerned and they understand that the... Um, that will consume a lot of students' data and all that. So they don't have classes beyond that, I mean, face-to-face uh, session beyond 30 minutes or 40 minutes. You know, the rest, it's that they will be giving um, activities for the students to do offline and they come back to do their presentation. So um, that there is this leeway of, of uh, communication. But when classes are on, everybody will have their videos on as well. So that means... Um, bolehlah kita tengok semua students kita but of course there are limitations to that in a class of 150 although technically speaking kita tak nampak semua orang yang ada kat dalam kelas kita tu but at least kita lah kita kalau berjalan kat dalam kelas dalam DKG tu we can see who is actually sleeping and who is not and all that and we can lah um, uh, do activities quick quick activities so that everybody yang yang uh, terlena tu uh, can you know perk up and all that but um in a, in in your in your desktop it depends on how wide your desktop is uh, you will not be able to see all 150 unless you slide which is, which is not going to be conducive to you you know you nak bagi uh, lecture ke you nak tengok semua orang nak buka kamera ke tak kan so there are 
uh, apa tu limitations to to this uh, setting and that's why it requires as as mentioned by dr norseha tadi it requires um, the accountability of the students uh, they have to be also um, given training on how to become self directed learners in order for them to know what they need to do whether you're watching or whether you're not i have to become assertive when i do not understand certain things i am okay to raise my hand and and um, ask questions um, because our students are naturally very very malu you know they are very very quiet shy and and all the 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 apa synonyms related to that so uh, that's the reason why we need to nudge them and that's that's the concern of uh, prof rayani i think without them in the classroom they will not get that facilitation um if they were just online so um ah uh, itulah benda-benda macam tu lah kita nak kena ajar if if the if we have um we are we are comfortable with doing it online and the students are comfortable to do it online we've got to do the right way which is the online way what our what our present curriculum is is it was designed for face to face it was designed for us to provide that facilitation in the classroom where they can have the ambiance of being surrounded by students getting feedback from their friends getting feedback from their lecturer so that multifaceted uh, apa ni uh feedback is 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 there in in the classroom if you if you really want to do that in the online you have to design the online activities to be as such like break up rooms and you know uh, them sharing back to everybody in a whole class uh, session so that requires design uh, it's not just lecturing for one and a half hours online as as mentioned by dr nosiha that is not blended learning that's just teaching face to face via online so because of that lah kita tak nampak muka student kita kita nampak muka kita aja so kita duduk macam nak duduk pun macam kita duduk sengit tudung pun kita duduk bagi betul eh padahal student kita pakai baju tidur depa aja kan so um, macam kita sekarang dia jugaklah ya 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 yes 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 so uh, So itulah bila kita dah bersedia untuk nak buat online kita tak boleh dah uh, condone to this flexibility yang siapa yang buka video boleh buka video siapa yang tak boleh tak uh, tak boleh so it has to be where everybody can get uh, that that exposure and 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 then the the activities must be like just as you do it in the classroom right i'm going to um, stop sharing here for a minute <clears throat> because um now i need to share what some people have actually would you be able to see this yeah so although i know there are 40 people but only 10 help to um answer this question but never mind that's that's um alhamdulillah better better than nothing um so technology seems to be your main challenge and uh, um we need to know what is it technology on your part technology uh, in the university provided by the university or is it provided by you so i think that that is what the university needs to 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 find out lah uh, in terms of financial again financial what do you mean by financial if it's in upper management that uh, financial okay that's why we need to figure out how to get um uh, maybe industry collaboration um in in help financing or help um sponsoring uh, certain technology that we can use in the in the um, in the university and certain universities have already done that um uh, questions that we we ask um when um um when we did this particular study um some actually provided uh, little um allocation to the lecturers to buy whatever equipment that they that they needed uh, in order to face the the you know the shift from um face to face um to online and um yeah um um uh, while some use that that the uh, allocation to to purchase um tools that 
that the whole entire university can use. And but but a few actually use it to upgrade their their cloud and you know the 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 the, the bandwidth and all that because they they knew that was important um, when when preparing students coming back to the campus. Um, and um, okay, so um, and the gate and again because. Some of you understand um, that this is uh, whatever MQA and and the and the professional bodies um, acceptance uh, to being flexible, um, looking at your curriculum. Which, for example, if your syllabus was was designed in such a way that it's 60, 40, and 40 is a final exam, you realize that sooner or later they're going to ask us what's going to happen with the final exam. So returning to the final exam is also a challenge. And if we want to continue to make sure that the final exam that we do in the hall can be now done online, as in real online assessment, then we cannot run away from having the proctoring, de uh, proctoring devices, uh, proctoring system, uh, e-proctoring system uh, in place uh, as part of our policy in the university to make sure that we will uh, reduce academic uh, dishonesty. Um, because the same questions, if you ask, I, I know in the beginning of the uh, the pandemic, we did um, uh, a lot of the universities um, uh, were thinking along the line of open book exam, but some um, simply just took the questions from their already established. I said established, but so I learned to mungkin dah bertahun-tahun di repeat uh, established final exam questions to check to give it to our students for open book. And then they complain because the students were actually copying. Yeah, lah. Uh, the questions that you ask are uh, the very questions that they can actually, with the with the touch of a button, they can get all this all sorts of resources from all over the world um, um, as the answer. So um, we have to be careful uh, to understand the nature of open book exam is not like the normal. Um, you know, final exam questions because the, the condition is different. In the final exam questions that we, we, we used to have in the hall, the, the, the students were not given resources. They were supposed to submit it within a time frame. You know, uh, their responses within a time frame, two and a half hours, three, three hours, depending. And um, there, there's no resources, no computer, no books. So it all, it's all, um, it all boils down to whatever that they understood from their lessons or what they can remember. Whereas if you give the same question when they are in their luxury, you know, in the, in the comfort of their homes, where computer is accessible, where books are also there, where experts around them, you know, some of them might even have uh, parents who are working as as uh, um, academic, uh, academics themselves, so they might get all this support from various parties and various places, and that's the reason why they get all the A's. And then you realize that it's not from them, you know, and and that become, becomes an issue. So all this needs to be um, taken into consideration. You need to understand what does it mean by open book exam, what kind of questions that it's suitable. Um, to ask those questions and and to under to understand the pr the 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 presage, you know the, the condition of our students in order for us to make sure that what whatever that they give us, we know that it is actually from them and not taken from somewhere else. And um, the next is and the rest are pretty much the same. I think um, getting students uh, motivation, internet. I'm not sure about the parents' fear, though. What, why do you think that the parents' fear is, is one of the challenges? What do you mean by that? If anyone can, can help me with that? Uh, because the online learning tools, yeah, correct. Um, um, at the moment, um, only certain tools are provided to all, which is like the WebEx or the Microsoft Teams. But other than that, if you're, you're using any Web 2.0 tools, um, practically we either use what's free and available or um, we have to purchase on our own. Okay. Parents fear, anyone wants to say anything about it? Why is that uh, a challenge? Is it parents fear for asking students to come back to the campus? <coughs> 
could that be the reason why that's your main challenge? I presume that's that's probably written by a pengetua of the Inasis. I'm just saying. Well, if the parents fear um, of their students coming back to the campus, that's where, um, as again um, uh, um, highlighted by Dr. Nusiha about who is your expert in in the situation? Who's the inf who has that information that you can? Uh, I know, I know, I know that Tazra, you don't have to claim you, uh, that you are the pengetua. Uh, I know it's not you, but if it's because of that, I mean, we are parents ourselves and we, we don't want our students to, uh, children to go back to campus simply because we are not sure what's going to happen on campus. So that's where the university needs to listen to the advice of the experts. And in this case, the expert is not the ones who are doing research, like we, what we understand uh, experts to be because this is related to the health so the expert that we are talking about here has got to have the medical background and in our research we find that if the institutions have leaders who are you know from, with a medical background their decisions are totally different than those who are not simply because they have the information so for those who are not i mean for 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 um for institutions that do not have leaders with that um, um, you know, background, they, they do have um, directors of health centers in every university. So they are the ones who need to be given the priority in providing good advice, what needs to be done um, in, in view of the safety of the students and, and, and whatnot. Because, well, all of us have already got our both our double jabs and all that. So naturally, we should be able to, to come back and, and do whatever that we, we're supposed to be doing. Um, although not necessarily 100% the old way, the, you know, the, what we used to do. But at least we can start, um, um, you know, slowly but surely, um, you know, getting back to being, uh, to fulfilling our curriculum and all that. Uh, unfortunately, the situation is is also not helping us. We are seeing the continuous continuous rise of the COVID um, cases, although it's not it's not that dramatic compared to before. But um, that could also be the fear of the the parents. So, really, um, we need to seek the advice of the experts in order for us to know whether is it. Is it feasible for our students to come back and so that we can start? Um, or is it just um, exaggerated fear? So all this um, has got to be um, uh, teeth out by the institutions lah, so that we will be able to continue um, as, um, as what we're supposed to do. Lah. Okay, um, I'm going to um, throw another question. To you. Okay, I think to do this, I'm going to stop sharing. Eh, good job. Open here. Yeah. I don't know what I did, but yeah. Okay. Um. Are you able to see what I'm seeing? Or I have stopped sharing. No, we can still see your screen um, with the question or the second question. Yeah. I don't like Zoom today. I don't want to call one day. Okay, just attempt the question lah, like that. Uh, I wanted to show to you the, oh, it's actually showing. Okay, I'll stop sharing here. Okay, 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 paham dah, paham dah. Sorry, ya. Ah. Ayan tak paham Google ni. Just to remind, to, um, yeah. To, uh,
yeah, that's the, the, the dimension that we were talking about. Um, so of the two dimensions, which one will be, will be your concern? That was the question, right? Of the two dimension, teaching learning dimension and, and the enabler, which component of the 12 would bear the most obstacle in your institution? Is it the curriculum? Is it the teaching practice? Is it the learning engagement? Which part? Uh, so it's the same code, um, same, same, what do? Same. Component uh, uh component twelve tu yang ni yang ni curriculum teaching practice da 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 da. So which one, which of this, um is the one yang you rasa, uh. Uh, would bear the most obstacle in your institution. Lah. Okay, now I'm gonna stop sharing here. I'm gonna stop sharing here. Okay, so um, based on based on the feedback, um, looks like um, <laughs> we almost have everything. Yang dua ni, you all tak dua ni apa hal? What is the dua? It's the number two, is it? Uh, I still don't know lah what it means. Uh, uh, this number two, but anyway, uh, for those who actually wrote um, the the component um, teaching learning MQA professional bodies, okay, coming back to um, the issue about um, MQA and professional bodies, MQA is actually now um, in in the process of improving their guidelines, their their uh, practice GGP they call it guideline for good practice I think for all for teaching and learning for assessment they're currently doing it because the last time they did it was in 2014 so it's about time that they that they improve on that and the, uh, this requires um, meeting up with professional bodies to find out to what extent would they um, uh, accept various types of assessment rather than just the final you know uh, exam hall kind of questions um, yeah, um, teaching and learning, uh, uh, understandable that teaching and learning is the dimension that is um, that you would have um, obstacle. Um, and that's hopefully why, um, hopefully with the um, University Teaching Learning Centers pro uh, providing the kind of learning uh, and teaching um, training would help um, um, everyone to equip themselves and improve their, um, you know, professional development. <laughs> It's just that uh, I think I remember seeing uh, UTLC sending um, email to find out what kind of training that um, all the instructors would need. I know there are only 40 of, 40 of us here in this session, which means there are many who did not listen to this. Um, hoping that um, you could actually um, also let UTLC know what kind of training that you would need so that they, that they can actually you know, uh, prepare um, for for like, to meet the needs the needs of the uh, instructors. 
Um, alternative assessment, we do have, um, I know in University Teaching Learning Center, we do have um, training on that. We even have IAP, uh, the, the, the program that we create um, future, lead, future experts in alternative assessment. Uh, they're still budding, uh, budding experts, but uh, nevertheless, they do have the, the, the foundation of what it means by alternative assessment. And we hope that they can now become the catalyst in their own faculties to also in, um, you know, um, involve and, and, and get people to understand about alternative assessment. Similarly for learning engagement um, as well. And um, yeah, leadership is also important because it will enable all the 11 components, correct? So leaders who understand uh, about the issues that we are facing and what needs to be done is very crucial. Um, and of course, uh, their main, for the leaders pula, for their main concern will be the financial support because they're not, uh, the times is quite hard now. Um, that's the reason why uh, financial support is, is very, very important. And in terms of curriculum, um, if, um, if, if based on the scenario that Prof Yani has given just now that lecturers and students are very much contented with um, doing it online, then that signals that the curriculum now has got to be changed. Uh, the, the curriculum that was designed for face-to-face -face must now be redesigned for online learning to be, to, be, to be conducted and to be getting the optimum level of learning rather than merely surface level of learning. Um, and and um, similarly, when you talk about curriculum, it's not only the teaching and learning, but also the assessment has got to be um, aligned as well so that it will fulfill the requirement in terms of standards and quality um, and, and related to the cost learning outcome. Lah. Um, and I think in terms of learning engagement, there are two here, three actually, learning engagement. So that's, that, that signals that will be the, the kind of like the main um, issue uh, that lecturers might face um, in terms of teaching and learning. When it comes to learning engagement, the only way to overcome this is through creating student-centered learning uh, activities. Uh, and again, this can also be done um, through, um, apa tu? through um, coming for training. Lah, if you don't know how to do student-centered learning, but if you can, uh, collaborate with your team members in order for us to, to, you know, to share um, what the what the um, activities that we can do with our with our students. Okay, don't don't. Do Itulah, this. Prof. Macam yeah. macam terfikir satu lah benda saya tak tahu nak letak kat mana lah yang ni. Macam hmm. uh, kita ada kumpulan kecil kecil, tetapi dari segi kita punya apa tu? Um, Topik tu dia sama kan, hmm. tetapi kerana student tu dibahagikan kepada kumpulan kecil-kecil Semua pesyarat akan macam kalau dahulu ialah kita masuk kelas Tapi kalau sekarang ni kita mengulang benda yang sama kalau kalau benda lah pengetahuan yang nak diberikan ke, ke, kepada pelajar tu kan uh, Jadi rasa macam dengan uh, tak tahulah sistem, adakah dia sistem ke kan Uh, kalau kita macam boleh macam ada satu satu jam uh, ataupun berapa jam yang macam dengan lecture yang banyak lepas tu yang masuk dengan pencerah yang itu dia macam praktis dia macam lebih kepada kepada pelajar uh, uh, student centered sebab mm. dia, dia ada yang kadang kita ialah bukan semua boleh student centered kan ada benda mm. yang kita nak sampai kan kan mm -mm. Uh, tetapi itulah yang kadang rasa macam dengan Bukan nak kata rugi, tapi rasa yang kadang macam tu juga lah kita mengulang benda yang sama, tapi kita duduk dekat depan juga. So kalau kita boleh macam collaborate dengan tim kita, okay untuk topik ni, okay you bagi, so you 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 know you you buatlah apa yang yang ini kan? Okay, um, that's a good point, Dr. Rohiza. Uh, tapi dia require, kita, maksudnya kita nak kena duduk dengan HA lah ni. Kalau katalah you nak buat macam tu, maksudnya team teaching lah. Basically team teaching yang besar-besaran. Tapi kita ha, ada. Kita, ada kita, kita kena kena pastilah dulu kot topik mana yang kita boleh buat macam tu. And then how to macam lepas tu bila pergi kepada this kumpulan kecil-kecil ni, okay macam mana kita nak kita nak buat kan. Yeah, I understand. So if that's the case, that then the school has got to decide bahawa 
untuk kursus scan oleh kerana dia melibati uh, melibatkan ramai pelajar dan ramai pensyarah dan pensyarah-pensyarah ni nak nak collaborate to do to do one aspect and and after that they do a lot of student centered learning dalam dalam uh, kumpulan masing-masing then it requires you to have only one slot yang sama tapi dia ada banyak groups ya yeah, awal 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 waktu awal awal semester ke macam tu Ya, yeah, yang tu you kena you kena book dah. Uh, maksudnya you want it to be designed that way so that semua orang yang mengikuti kursus uh, whatever 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 ni masa dia sama untuk semua kumpulan. So dia kena datang dari bottom up lah eh. Dia kena datang daripada pencerah. Ah, yeah, it's the school. It's the school that will decide all this. Setiap setiap semester HCE akan tanya dekat sekolah dekat sekolah akan tanya dekat pusat pengajian. Uh, apa ni uh, jadual waktu depa suruh bagi senarai jadual waktu betul tak uh, Dr Nolena sebab ada lama tak jadi penyelaras dan dah lama tak jadi dekan <laughs> ya betul ya betul ha, dia, jadi, tanya, dia tanya aku kumpulan je dia tanya khusus apa dan berapa kumpulan tapi waktu dan sebagainya tu mereka yang tentukan ECA. tapi sebenarnya boleh kita boleh tentukan i i have done that before kalau uh, yang ada program tu ya lah kot tapi kalau selalunya kelas yang besar-besar ni ialah kelas yang melibatkan satu universiti Like what? Example? Uh, kelas Bahasa Melayu lah contohnya. Yang kelas yang elektif program, elektif bebas. Uh. Macam etika, apa tu, kenegaraan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Dan, uh, Actually ada lagi cara untuk nak selesaikan kan? ni. Uh, okay. Ada lagi cara untuk nak selesaikan ni. Cara dia ialah untuk kita pre-record our lectures. Sampai you puas hatilah you punya lecture tu. You pre-record and I'm sure UTLC tu Uh, Dr Izwan tu over, uh, apa ni um, ever welcome uh, people to go to apa ni UTLC to do the recording have it all done for 14 weeks until you puas hati for forever that you need to say to your students put it in the LMS for them to refer whenever wherever and however how many times and depa nak depa nak tengok so the class that you have uh, with your students for one and a half jam tu is to go through those those materials that you have already in, uh, uh, dah bagi input dekat dalam dalam lesson tu lah kan possible kan yang tu yang tu you can still go with different different yeah. slots whatever uh, the time that you are given you dah bagi dah lecture you tak payah nak lecture dalam class you ialah okay time for us to really uh, make sure that i want to see whether my students really understand what i say so janganlah kat dalam tu pun you still you still uh, lecture lagi dia more of like What was the four elements that was it? Why is this four elements important? Depa pula uh, bagi kat kita view. Depa pula uh, daripada four elements tu so depa kena buat mind map ke contoh. Satgi so, depa pula nak kena buat role play. You know, so it's not you anymore taking charge of the the lesson. You have already designed the lesson. Yang taking charge on your part is to make sure you want to check whether depa understand ke tak. The CLO to achieve ke tak. Okay, Prof, we have reached, uh, I mean, it's 12. Uh, <laughs> I can get carried away. Okay, time to wrap up. Yeah. Well, to wrap up, this is the this is it. Lah. I'm not going to read. Uh, I think it's, it's, it's self-explanatory. Um, what we need to do in terms of curriculum, teaching, learning and assessment um, um, in us as, as, as lecturers, lah. Um, you know, what, what we can do. So I think um, thank you to my team members, Dr. Nor Seha and Dr. Norliana, wonderful team members. And thank you, Dr. Sari, for moderating this session. And I open to any questions lah, uh, for discussion. Uh, do you want me to stop sharing? Stop? Huh? Yeah. Well, up to you. If Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, now we can see all the names. Oh. All right. If, if there's any question, please do ask. Would you try it, huh? Well, I think. Uh, sorry. No, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. I think the 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 greater challenge is assessment, um, because at the end of the day, 
um, that's what any auditors will come to see whether, you know, despite the pandemic, whether we, we were able to still um, deliver what we have uh, pledged to deliver uh, by, via our curriculum. So I think um, what we need to do is to equip ourselves if we still do not know how to, um, you know, uh, get the... Putting get the items correctly, uh, asking the right questions and all that. I think training needs to be to be done lah. It needs to be. We have to admit that we need to improve ourselves if that's that's the problem, because, uh, yeah, you can do your your forty percent online or, uh, face to face, just like the normal in the hall exam hall type of thing, but at the end of the day, the question will be. Uh, that is just the mode of how your 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 students are coming for the exam. You know, to sit for the exam. What what's more important is, um, did they meet the CLO that you have already indicated for that forty percent? So if you want to change to your alternative assessment, ka, you want to change for open book exam, ka, it has got to be tallied to the CLO that you have already set. And the amount that means empat puluh peratus tu mesti kena ada dia punya dia punya level level dia tu semua kena jaga. So if we if we can do that, then uh, it doesn't matter whether it's online or or face to face. But the if we have problems to convince people with evidence that ini, uh, I think that will be an issue lah. Uh, and it's not just an issue in UUM. It's an issue. It's a universal issue actually. So. Kukuk lah nak tanya tapi tak tertanya kan. Yang tu lah yang pada I uh, pelajar ni nak patut balik ke kampus ke tak balik ke kampus ke. Yang tu soalan tu kena tanya dekat orang yang ada uh, information which is actually uh, because this is a pandemic the expert that we are talking about here is the medical expert. They will tell us um, the situation, the scenario, the, 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 the extent to which we can prepare ourselves. Um, for what's coming, you know, they can do that prediction. They can have that analytics to tell us um, what based on the popular wave, ka, apa, ka, They will know uh, what is best for our students and how do we overcome this. So, uh, so I think in our case, whether it is online or face to face, we need to make sure that uh, soalan yang kita bagi tu, assessment yang kita bagi tu, menjawab CLO yang telah ditetapkan dalam curriculum dalam syllabus yang telah diberikan kepada kita. And then we're fine. Apart from student-centered learning activities, lah, so that students are engaged in the lesson. Hmm. Then can I add to that? Yes, please. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, in fact, uh, I think uh, by March uh, 18, you are uh, going to celebrate uh, the two years of the when we started our MCO. But now we are can back back to the office. Just that I will, on my personal note now, what I what what I think that we can think of it as the last two years is an experience. Yeah, uh, it is a new experience to all of you, of of all all of all of us, and then we go through day by day and not knowing what is going to happen. Yeah, uh, but uh, it is a wonderful experience, even the, even though it is hard. Yeah, but uh, I like to uh, quote John Dewey where where he said that. We do not actually learn uh, from experience. Yeah, we don't learn from experience, but we are only learn from reflecting on the experience that what we have gone through. So that is a time for us. So we still have more time yeah, before we start our class uh, on the 27th of March, uh, even though we have to be online. So maybe this is time for us to reflect yeah, what we have done in the past two years. And then maybe we can... Uh, uh, think about it. Eh? Uh, what we're going to do for the future, for the benefit of our students and the whole uh, nation. Yeah, because we are preparing our future leader. Okay, that's about it from me. All so, right. Oh. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Nosiha. Uh, maybe Dr. Olin, a uh, brief um, final say. I hope things will be easier, <laughs> and everyone. You know, we'll find the best uh, right, but, uh, avenues, uh, resources, uh, support that you know, everyone needs during this tough time. And stay safe and, you know, and take care. That's it. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Appreciate it.
Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Prof. Fauzia. Thank you, Dr. Nusiha. And thank you, Dr. Nuliana. Uh, and thank you, everyone in the audience for your uh, uh, for, for participating in this uh, webinar. And we hope that with this uh, important information of the 12 dimensions and the, you know, within the image of uncertainty that we are facing that, uh, you know, uh, we can create a better uh, future environment for learning. And hopefully it will facilitate everyone involved, especially, of course, especially at the end of it is our students, our future um, generations. Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, Assalamualaikum.